Hey guys, welcome back to my watch blog. This is Jay Anthony and this is installment number five. And we're going to address one question on this video for two reasons. Uh, one is I didn't get that much uh, feedback on uh, questions for future videos last week. So uh, keep them coming. There is uh, one question I'm not going to discuss on this video just yet and that relates to uh, FP Journe and other uh, niche market uh, watch companies strictly because I'd like to get some more content for a video on that. So in this video we're going to focus on one topic and that topic is what's the best way to purchase a Rolex watch or any other high-end watch? And so I'll kind of go through some of the various ways you can buy one and kind of positives and negatives of those situations. Um, I'd like to try to keep these fun. I know if you guys have been following me for a while, some of my old videos are really, really, really boring. And they're very monotone and I'm very dull and just listing facts and I know. I'm a nerd, I can't help it, I'm not always fun. So I'll, I'll try to keep these entertaining and if you fall asleep, I'm sorry. But uh, please do me a favor, give me some more questions to talk about in the vlog, and uh, we'll be good to go. So I just need some content, so please feed my content. And uh, back to the question. So I get asked a lot, you know, where do you buy your watches? And there's a multitude of places that I've bought watches before. So if we're dealing with Rolexes and high-end watches, you basically kind of have a couple different options you can go. The most generally accepted form of purchasing a watch like this, Rolex, Omega, Breitling, any other big tier brand is you go to an authorized dealer. And I personally don't buy from authorized dealers most of the time. So what's the positives and negatives of buying from an authorized dealer? The positive of buying from an authorized dealer is if you're purchasing a new piece that's going to come with a warranty from the manufacturer which can typically be from a year to several years, so you're getting that. You're also going to get the original sales receipt and the warranty papers are going to be in your name. So when you go out to sell on the piece to another owner, should you decide to do that, you're going to have all the paperwork for the watch, so it's going to make it easier for you to sell. Um, on the used market, watches with paperwork and original sales receipts and original boxes especially uh, have more value than watches that are sons, all this stuff. And again, so if you're buying something from an authorized dealer, you're going to get the pretty watch box, you're going to get the warranty paperwork, and you're also going to have the confidence in knowing that you're buying a genuine article, a genuine piece. So they're authorized, they're getting their inventory straight from the manufacturer, so you're not going to have to be overly concerned about the authenticity of the watch. And again, you're getting all the original paperwork and the boxes, so if you go to sell it on down the road, that's pretty safe. Um, the other thing that they can do sometimes is they'll have pre-owned watches. Um, there's some watch uh, authorized dealers out there like uh, I know Torneau for example. And there's several other ones where they'll sell pre-owned watches. And again, since in theory they're tied to the manufacturer and they deal with authentic pieces all the time, you're a lot less likely to purchase a fake watch from one of these companies. And if you did discover you purchased something fake, mistakes happen, you have a large company you're dealing with and you know they're going to more likely than not take care of it for you and make sure that you're happy because if they, if it ever escaped that they were selling fake watches to customers, they would lose their ability to sell the new watches. So it's in their best interest to only deal in authentic pieces and to take care of their customers so that they can thereby keep their licenses and have the ability, well not licenses, but keep the, uh, their contracts with the large manufacturers to keep selling those pieces. And you're also going to have good selection. So, you know, there's a multitude of different models that every manufacturer makes. Rolex is no exception. And if you're looking for variety, um, there's a lot of models that just are really kind of hard to come by. You know, maybe you're looking for a blue bezel or maybe you want the rare blue dial or, you know, what have you. Um, an authorized retailer may not have the exact one you want in stock, but they're going to know how to order it for you. Whereas if it's a rare watch and it's a rare color combination or option combination, you may have a harder time locating it on, from another source. So you're going to have a much better opportunity to find the exact watch that you want. So those are the positives of buying from an authorized dealer. The negatives, well, you're the price. So they're in business to make money, as they all are, but on top of the need to make money, they really need to make money because they have this beautiful establishment. If you're an authorized dealer, odds are they have a very pretty environment that you're in taking in this, this whole purchasing process. So you walk in, they're going to have a beautiful showroom, they're going to have a ton of inventory that they had to pay for and they're supporting. They're going to have you know, a bunch of sales staff on site that are there to answer questions for you and take care of you. And they have to pay all those people money. They have to pay to keep the lights powered on at night. They had to pay for all those pretty display cases. You know, odds are, especially of really high-end watches, say Patek Philippe or Audemars Piguet, they're going to have prime real estate for their stores. I mean, we're talking Fifth Avenue in New York City. So they're going to be paying a fortune on their, uh, their leases to, own those, to have those storefronts. 
and where are they going to get that cost to pay for that? They're going to pass it on to you, the consumer. So the delta between the price they're paying from the manufacturer and what they're actually charging you retail is going to be enormous. And so you're going to be paying a lot of money for a watch. And you're, in most cases, there's some exceptions to this, but a lot of watches like Rolex, if they can't discount below a certain margin on their watches. Um, I know a lot of dealers do it, but if they get caught doing, uh, re um, help me, uh, discounts, large discounts on some of the pieces, they can lose their license to uh, distribute that brand. So they're going to want to keep their prices high. And again, they need that margin so that they can keep their stores open. They can keep that pretty placement on Fifth Avenue and those pretty display cases and have that large selection for you to peruse. So again, price is going to be the biggest thing. The other thing is surprisingly their, their knowledge can be not that great. So it's kind of like if you go to buy a car. You're going to meet some salespeople that really know their product inside and out. They're really passionate about it, and you know they know everything about you know on a car world, the engine, and in the watch world, they know about the movements. They could explain to you why the 3135 and the Submariner is a great movement, for example. But the other side is a lot of these authorized dealers. There's a lot of sales staff there that doesn't really know the product at all, and there's two reasons for this. One is they might be representing a multitude of brands, and so if they're not specializing in a particular brand, they have to know a little bit about everything. So if you're a real watch connoisseur, odds are you're probably going to know more about the watches they're selling than they are. And the other thing is you think about that the general audience of these watches is for status symbols. Let's just be realistic here. And a lot of people that are going into these stores to buy a watch, if we're being honest with ourselves, they really don't care what kind of movement the watch has in it or how it was made or the technical specs or its power reserve. They care about what kind of status does this watch give me. And you're welcome to disagree, but I have a suspicion this is kind of the way this stuff works. So. They ought to be more interested in the fact that they can get the 18 karat gold model because it makes them special when they take their kids to soccer practice and they're going to be less concerned that it has a 42 power, 42 hour power reserve. So if you're a watch kind of sore and you want to just walk into one of these stores and have a good even, like a good even watch conversation or even get into the fine details of the piece you're considering purchasing, you may walk in to someone that knows nothing about the watch that can just tell you how much it costs and that it has 18 karat gold on it. And they may not even be able to tell you whether or not it's solid gold or not. So. Again, that's kind of what you're going to get with an authorized dealer. Beyond that, you got to get into the secondary market. So there's uh, secondary market dealers, and these are dealers that specialize in used watches. And I won't give any names uh, just because I don't want to recommend somebody and somebody have a bad experience. But there are some really good stores out there that specialize in pre-owned watches. Um, you can find these guys online, and what they do is they they buy used watches for a living. So they they go on eBay and they 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 go to independent sellers and they purchase pre-owned Rolexes and pre-owned Omegas, etc. They hire their own staff of watchmakers and then they service these watches themselves and then they'll sell them and they strictly deal with the used watches. And typically these guys will know a little bit more about their watches because they actually have to buy these things on the second market, which means that they have to really know how to tell if they're authentic or not. And they're doing these servicing inside their own stores, so they have their own watchmakers working on these watches. So they're going to know the watches better strictly because they buy them all the time and because they need to be knowledgeable so that they don't get taken advantage of and because they're working on these things within their own store. And because you're buying a watch used, you're going to get a good deal on these watches compared to a new price. So you're not going to be paying you know, the full retail price. You'll be paying whatever uh, the fair market value is for a used version of that watch. Um, so if you're looking for somebody that has a good selection of watches, if you want to walk to one of these stores and they're going to have They'll have the gamut of, you know, Jager Le Coltre, Rolex, Patek Philippe, Omega. It's going to be, you know, they might have a certain specialty, but you're going to have a lot more selection on brands. And their models are going to have, uh, you know, probably about five or ten years on them. They're going to be older models that they picked up secondhand. So they tend to have pretty good value and pretty good selection. They're going to be very knowledgeable staff. Flip side is it's going to be, the selection is not going to be as good as an authorized dealer because... Again, you're dealing with pre-owned watches that have kind of been picked up a la carte. They're not things that are being ordered directly from the manufacturer. They're more than likely not going to be able to get you the exact watch you want if it's a very specific rare model. And, you know, if it's a current production watch and they're an authorized retailer, they can order it from the manufacturer for you. But if they're secondhand, they're going to be limited to whatever is available on the used market. Um, with these guys as well, because they also operate um, a storefront, and let me make this caveat first. So the stores that I'm referring to typically will have an online presence. They'll have websites you can go to. They'll more than likely even have eBay listings, but 
the thing I want you to keep in mind with these guys is these are ones that also have a physical storefront. And that's very important as I would never consider purchasing a watch over, I'd say even $500 from someone that didn't have an actual storefront. Because if they have a storefront and they're open to business, that gives you a little more uh, comfort knowing that you could go walk into that store and you could have a discussion with them and they're going to be easier to deal with and easier to track down if you get poor service. So not only does that give you the benefit of going in to actually visit them and look through their inventory if that's an option if you live close, but if something goes wrong, in the case of my Daytona, which I had a bunch of issues with, because they operated a physical storefront and they actually had a physical address, I knew where they were and I was able to get a hold of them. They had a, a you know a normal telephone number that I could call them on and they were easy to get a hold of. And if for whatever reason they just decided to totally you know be rude to me and screw me over, I could literally you know get to their store address and I could walk in and I could have a conversation with them and say this isn't okay. So again, there's that access to them and having that physical address gives you a little bit of a safety net of knowing you can deal with these people. They're going to have a listing in the Better Business Bureau more than likely in the U.S. So they're concerned about their reputation because they're not just selling online. They actually have a real reputation they need to be worried about within their community as well. So you're going to have a little bit better of an of a assurance of good quality service from them. And it also was helpful because if you wanted to trade in some watches to them, you could also go into one of these establishments and more than likely they'll have an ability for you to trade in your watches to them or they'll just purchase them from you outright, which is something an authorized dealer may not always be interested in doing. A lot of authorized dealers, there's exceptions to this, are interested in selling just their new watches. They may not be open to purchasing a pre-owned watch from a customer. And for me, there was every time I bought a new watch, I would stop wearing my old ones just because I was all about the new watch. So I wanted to be able to trade in my old watches, get some money applied towards my new purchase, and so that was a big selling feature for me. Negat negatives, uh, again, you're going to have poor selection because, again, they're just kind of getting a spattering of whatever's available on the used market. And so if you're looking for a specific model, odds are you're probably not going to be able to get something very rare from one of these guys. It's possible, but it's going to take you a lot longer because they're going to have to source it and they're going to have to be checking sales to find you one. Also because, like the authorized dealer, they have a physical establishment and they're paying for this retail space and they're paying employees, you're going to be paying more money. They're going to be charging you more than you'd be purchasing one of these watches from an individual seller. Um, but the plus side of that is, again, they have an establishment, which means, again, there's, a, there's the ability for you to go in and have a dialogue with them and there's a little extra bit of assurance because of that. More than likely, they're going to have watchmakers on staff and they're also probably going to be certifying these pieces as pre-owned pieces and giving you some sort of a warranty. So. There's value on both sides of this equation. Again, the only big caveat to these guys is you're going to be paying a premium over um, doing something private party. And private party is when we get into kind of the last, well, I'd say there's the final bucket, which is the scariest bucket of purchasing watches. So me personally, I'm in the second category. I like to deal with pre-owned watch dealers. That's where my comfort level is. Um, with the exception of like Seiko's and some lower-end watches, I'll deal with in this last category. And this last category is dealing with private parties. And basically by private parties, I mean any sort of an individual seller that their basis of their business is not based on selling high-end watches. So you could throw pawn shops into this equation. Pawn shops, you know, they might be getting in random high-end watches just because they've done pawns with people. They're not more likely not going to be experts on these watches. They probably aren't going to be opening them or servicing them. So there's a, a liability that you might be getting something that may not be 100% authentic and they may not really know what it is they're selling you. So you can not only could have mechanical issues, you might be purchasing something that isn't as, as it's described. Um, I'd also throw in eBay sellers into this equation. So there's the eBay sellers that are like my second tier that actually have real storefronts. And again, those guys, I think there's a reasonably low risk because they have, again, a footprint in a community and they have a reputation to maintain. But there are some fly-by-night eBay sellers with no real feedback that don't have a physical storefront and so if you buy something from them that has mechanical issues or isn't as it's represented you're taking on the risk that you have no way of tracking these people down and there's no way for you to get your money back or get your issues addressed so if you're looking for the best price um, watch meets would be the same way there's there's local watch shows where you can deal with uh, watch traders and buy watches this way as well they're slightly lower risk because they tend to know their business as well but there are some shady characters there as well so the last tier is buying from anybody that doesn't have an established storefront and isn't really by that A, able to be tracked down or and they're not, there's really no guarantee you're going to get good customer service from them because you have no real way to keep them accountable to the sale. And more likely than not, they're not going to be an expert on whatever watch that they sold you because 
they either got it like they're a pawn shop and they just bought it because it was worth some sort of value and they needed it as collateral or they bought it for the sole purpose of making money but they, they buy a lot of watches and maybe they don't really know the watches so well or mechanically they don't know how to evaluate them so you could be buying someone else's problems and it's the last tier you know again these are the eBay auctions from people with low feedback or no feedback they don't have storefronts this could be the pawn shops and this could be you know just even watch traders you know the prices are going to be the best but you also have to really be on your A game of knowing what it is that you're buying and you need to understand that there's a lot of risk that you're taking by doing something like that so you know if you can see and you might you can get lured into a false sense of security you might see on like an eBay listing that they're showing you pictures of the movement and they're showing you the serial numbers and these are things that you know enough about watches to know that these are authentic just because you're seeing something that's authentic on the listing doesn't mean that's actually the watch you're going to get in the mail right Anybody can do a Google search, copy some images, throw them on a listing. And frankly, you may never even get sent anything at all. It takes nothing to set up an eBay account, throw up some fake pictures, and as soon as you get payment, disappear. So not everybody's going to be like this, but understand in this kind of category, you're taking on that kind of a risk. So let's kind of summarize this. Most expensive, you're going to an authorized dealer. You're going to get great selection. Staff's going to be sort of knowledgeable. They're not going to be great but you're getting guaranteed authenticity for the most part. You're gonna get really good customer service and you're also gonna get all the warranty papers in the boxes and all the things that are really gonna help you sell these things secondhand should you decide to do that. The second market is gonna be like dealers that specialize in used watches and they're gonna have a storefront. They're probably gonna have a watchmaker on staff. They're probably gonna be doing certified pre-owned pieces. You're gonna have kind of a random collection of watch pieces. They're gonna be you know used. You're gonna get a pretty good price on them and uh, but I understand you're still going to be paying you know a premium over what you would from the last year because these people have staff they need to maintain they're paying the lease on their building there's going to be some sort of a larger profit margin in the mix for them and then the last thing again is these are going to be the cheapest if you're buying from an individual seller or from a pawn shop or from like a general watch trader in general and or even just an individual seller let's say you go to a garage sale and somebody's offering you a used Rolex um, you may get a really good deal, but you also could be buying something that's not as it's represented. It could have mechanical issues, it may be fake, it may have fake parts in it. You really got to be on your A-game and understand what it is that you're buying. And you need to understand too that you're taking some inherent risk by purchasing a watch in this way. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, again, my personal take is the second tier is the way to go. I deal with uh, secondhand watch dealers that know their stuff. They have watchmakers on site and there's a confidence that there's gonna be authenticity in the piece you're buying. Unless I'm buying something lower in like a vintage Seiko, I'm open to buying something like that on eBay because while there is a fake market for vintage Seikos, it's nowhere near as rampant as it would be for like a fake Rolex. So the risk is a lot lower and I'm willing to take that risk. That, and there aren't a lot of watch dealers that specialize in vintage Rolexes where I live, for example, or uh, vintage Seikos where I live. So hopefully that's helpful. Please do me a favor, please leave some feedback below. If you liked the video, please give me a like. If you didn't like it, please feel free to tell me why not. If uh, you could do me a favor and leave me some questions for future vlogs, much appreciated. And uh, once again, thank you so much for your support of this channel and for watching, really appreciate it. And uh, have a good rest of your day.